Like, it's, it's like the Japanese arcades, but 50 times worse. Should I be scared? Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. As you can see, I'm at Makuhare Mess for the Tokyo Game Show. It doesn't actually say Tokyo Game Show anywhere on the front, but that's probably because this isn't the, really the main entrance. Tokyo Game Show 2018. Um, I'm using it right now just because it's still kind of clear, but as you can see, people are still over there queuing up, getting ready to go in because it still hasn't started, but actually it should start like right about now. What I was actually trying to find is not this main Tokyo Game Show 2018 sign. I'm actually trying to find the hall down here, which is Convention Hall B, and that's actually where the Street Fighter stuff is being held. It's not this blue area here. It's a little bit to the side. I've decided to make my very first tournament ever to be Tokyo Game Show, which I'm sure is going to be a mistake. You actually don't need a Tokyo Game Show ticket to get into the Street Fighter tournament. All right, this looks like the place. International Conference Hall here in English and in Japanese. That's where I'm trying to go. This is where I'm not trying to go. This is where all the people lining up around the building. You can actually see over on the other side of this bridge. There they are, still queuing up. Not only is there a queue around the building, but there's a queue once you already get into the building. This is actually where we're trying to get into. This is where the Street Fighter people hang out. There it is. Convention Hall B, that's where we're going. So it looks like that is where I'm going to register. You can see the Street Fighter logos. I can't zoom in, but there you go. All right, so I have received my information. I've got like a souvenir sticker as well. Silver! Surprise, it's not gold. Cut on Pro Tour. I'm gonna write my name on this sticker and we're gonna see if we can uh, get some artists. Oh, I need to go and sign up here. I'm gonna sign my name on this table and then get ready. This is what it looks like on the inside at Tokyo De La Game Show. All right, I've got my name. This woman behind me keeps telling me to sit down, so I'm gonna go and sit down. Okay, so I can see it now. It actually says like A4, A2. It's got the numbers on the things. I probably just need to find my one, which is A25. No, I'll just go show you the, the pool behind me. These are all people behind me. Should I be scared? It's like the Japanese arcades, but 50 times worse. Or 100 times worse, because there's just so many more of them. But they all look as serious and ready to bite people's heads off. Uh, but, but friendly at the same time. Alright, so my first ever tournament match, and it's Tokyo Game Show. So I've never been to a Street Fighter local, never participated in a Street Fighter tournament, and here I am sitting next to a native Japanese fighting game player. I'm scared out of my mind. He's also chosen to sit cross-legged, so who knows, maybe he's got some sort of special technique. I know nothing about this person, and what's really scary about going into a tournament is that you don't know anything about this person, but they're sitting right next to you. When you're on the internet, maybe you know nothing about them, but you know, you don't know where they are, you don't know who they are, you don't know what they look like, they can't pop off on you at the end of a match. Plus, it's the Capcom Pro Tour, so they have the rights to film you the whole time. Anyway, it looks like the match was about to begin, so he had chosen Cody. I actually felt a bit stronger knowing that he had chosen Cody because I'm, I'm fairly confident against Cody. I don't think he's too tricky a character. He doesn't have any tricks up his sleeve the way that Ibuki does. Like Ibuki has all these EX kunais that she can throw at you from like right above your head. I think one thing that really surprised me at the start of this match was that, wow, it's just like, it's just like any other match. In Street Fighter, just because a person's at a tournament or because a person's a, a pro player, they still have to play the exact same game that you've been playing for months on end before you came to this tournament anyway. So it's like, if he wants to get in on you, he's gonna have to approach you, he's gonna have to jump in on you, or he's gonna have to do some sort of special move to get in. It's exactly the same game that you've been playing. It's just in a different place with lots of cameras and hundreds of people. I was feeling quite confident at this point. I thought, okay, 
hasn't got me in the corner. All I wanted to be sure of is that from the start of the match, I didn't get double perfected. As long as I don't get double perfected, I'll feel like I've succeeded in some way. I got that throw, so lucky. I think he was starting to wonder like, hmm, this person's clearly not that good, so why am I losing? One of the main issues at this point that I'm starting to realize throughout the first round actually, is that the headphones actually didn't work. So right now, what I'm actually hearing in my headphones is the background music and the sound effects coming from my character. So when I threw a kunai, or when I like, like just now when I tried to do a throw, I would hear those sound effects. But when he would actually like activate a V-trigger or he would do a move or something, I actually couldn't hear anything. So I was very tempted actually to just take my headphones off. And as actually, actually you can see on the table there, my opponent's green headphones are actually on the table because there's no point listening to it. So in fact, taking your headphones off and just listening to the button sound from your opponent's arcade stick is actually probably a better thing to do. And actually, right before this match was an Oil King round and his opponent had taken his headphones off and then Oil King, I think he just took his headphones off and they ended up playing the whole game in silence. It just felt weird to be listening to all this sound which has nothing to do with the game. It's basically 80% background music and a bit of sound effects from your own character. Okay, it looks like I still have a chance, but then I'm doing these dangerous jump-ins. There you can see I still, I still lack the ability to block overheads. Now once he won that game, I was like, uh-oh. Download complete. He clearly, he knows what's up. At this point, I'm kind of happy with myself. I'm like, you know what? I won one round. I don't need to win this whole match. I just felt good enough already that I had won something. I tried to take my time, but obviously I, I could have taken a little bit more time between the rematch, but I was like, rush in, let's go. And at this point, I know that he's got a lot stronger. He's, he knows that overheads are my weakness, so he, here come the jump-ins. Now I'm in the corner, can't jump out. Because he can hear my buttons. I, si I really wish I had just taken my headphones off. Now something that's really different to playing online, when you go to a local or when you go to a tournament, and I discovered this when I went to the Blaze Blue Cross Tag locals recently, is that they can hear your buttons so loudly. Like, when you wake up and you, like, mash the buttons, like, it's so obvious because you have to mash the button and it's like a second before it actually happens, not a whole second, but it's like quite a long time before it actually shows up on screen. The fact that they can hear your buttons and that there's quite a large input delay in this game makes it really important that you can hear your opponent's buttons or not. Like, I think that makes quite a big difference. Then again, maybe I'm just such a noob at this game that I, I don't really know. Missed that throw. This happened a lot in the week before the tournament. I was actually practicing on stream a lot, trying to make sure that I was not ready to win, but at least ready to put on a good match for my opponent. I just didn't want my opponent to be bored. Oh, here comes the overhead, here comes the overhead. Oh, ah. That hurt. I mean, it was expected. Of course I'm sore that I lost, you know, it does mean something to me to win or to lose. I did want to win, but hey, you know, I knew what my actual level was and I knew that it was unlikely that I was going to beat him. I was just happy that I got that first round. Anyway, my first ever Tokyo Game Show, well done, my first ever Street Fighter tournament match. And it was quite an experience and I'm glad I just won a single round at least. All right, well that is my two matches over when 0 oh and 2 as they say, which means you lose 2 and the other guy 1, 2, I don't really know what that means. I have to say that was not anything like I was expecting, I think, I think you watch it a lot on TV and you expect to feel certain ways, you expect like it's gonna like make sense or be obvious, but what actually happened is I went in and the sound was only playing music and the sound effects from the right side of the screen, so it was playing monoroll the whole time. So anything that came from the left side was kind of a, a surprise. I'm not making an excuse, I am kind of making excuses, but essentially I couldn't hear anything that came from the left side of the screen. The first person I fought was, I can't even remember who I fought the first, the second one was Abigail, That's, that left stuck in my mind. But the first, who was my first match? Uh, wow, I can't even remember who I fought. I, like, it's, I've, gone, I've gone completely blank. Basically, you fall out of pools and then you don't play anymore. But if you make it out of pools, then you go on to like the winners rounds and losers rounds and all the like top 100 and top 64, top 32, all that. And then they'll have the final tomorrow here at Tokyo Game Show. So on this side, you've got the tournament, and on that side, they've got the actual trade show as well. 
new games coming out. I can't even remember who I fought. Wow, you just wipe stuff out of your mind. Anyway, another mistake I probably made was drinking coffee. Because this whole week I've been playing Street Fighter on the street. I was drinking water the whole time. And like when I got into the match, I was like, oh my god, heart's pumping. I wish I hadn't dr drunk so much caffeine. So sometimes coffee is a bad thing. Nah. Check this out. So I bought from the SNK, oh sorry, it's on the other side. From the SNK store, I bought the K Dash hoodie. Obviously, I can't show it to you right now because I've only got one hand, but it's in there. It costs like a hundred dollars, but it's got a picture of K Dash on the back and it says Nests on the front from King of Fighters, the 99, you know, that story arc bit. Anyway, I'm really excited about it. And I think that's about it for me today. That was my first tournament, Tokyo Game Show. I think the best part about it is that if you lose, you can still go and see the rest of Tokyo Game Show, do a bit of shopping. It is crazy hectic because it's so busy here, but I've had a really good time, even though I lost. Like, I feel like it, it didn't really matter. I mean, of course I'm upset that I lost, but I kind of knew that I was going to lose, so I was ready for it. And I feel like there was quite a lot to enjoy about the show, sorry, to enjoy about the tournament, even though I wasn't you know, a winner and get out of pools and stuff. I wasn't really, it's the first tournament I've ever been to in my whole life. I mean, it's my first one at Tokyo Game Show, but it's also my first tournament in general. Like, I don't go to locals, well, I've been once, but I don't go to locals, I don't go to tournaments and stuff. Oh man, Tokyo Game Show is awesome. Anyway, I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video, and hopefully I'll have a chance to slowly talk about the whole experience. This is all just kind of too much to take in right now. Anyway, see you next time.